It's funny that most people will say, how did you get from having a record store to what you're doing today? But to me, it's obvious, you know, it's, I was on the luge, right? It was like a straight shot because stinkweeds and modified arts are at their core, they're placemaking entities, right? We are creating culture, we are creating a sense of place. And so with Local First, I wanted to create a voice for small businesses and also put us in the forefront of economic development for the state's initiative, for youth retention, right? If we wanna build hometown pride, that's gonna keep more people in this place. At that time, people were leaving in droves saying, I'm leaving, it has no culture here, we have no soul, and I was like, oh, just, you just wait. We're going to have culture and soul. I see it. We're going to we're going to bring it out and begin to showcase that. The person who helped start Local First Arizona was Cindy Dash from Changing Hands Bookstore. The original economic study that was done in Austin, Texas in 2002, ironically, was looking at the economy through the lens of a bookstore and a record store in Austin that were operating on a street where the city of Austin incentivized the borders to move in across the street from the two independents. So I was so intrigued with this study that Cindy and I got on a plane and flew to Austin together as the owner of a rec store, record store and a bookstore to meet with them, learn about the study, and the study proved that locally owned businesses keep three times more money recirculating in the local economy because the local businesses hire local graphic designers and website developers, payroll service providers and others, and the local chain or a, a corporate chain doesn't do that. So we came home and started Local First Arizona. Local First Arizona is a statewide nonprofit organization that is working to build a more diverse and inclusive Arizona economy. So the words diversity and inclusivity are everywhere but that's been our mission for more than a decade. And so what we mean by that is giving everyone an opportunity to participate in the economy and to grow small business, grow entrepreneurship, and ensure that we're keeping dollars and jobs right here in Arizona. I feel that it's important to make sure that different perspectives are represented and certainly that there's equity and equality around how um, our communities are structured, right? If, if certain people have rights and other people don't, that doesn't make logical sense to me. One of the things that stands out to me as a, a very vivid memory was early in Stinkweeds. I was alone in the store and there were two women in the store and I was just doing some paperwork and I looked up and they were holding hands. And my immediate response was one of pride. And the reason I felt proud is because I realized that I had succeeded in creating a safe place. That the year was 1988 and these two women felt comfortable showing physical affection in my store was a major accomplishment to me. One community in Local First Arizona are natural allies as organizations. We are driving the culture and the face of inclusivity uh, in Arizona from a diverse economy perspective. And the work that one community does it has transformed the state. And I, I think the two organizations are perfectly designed to work together. But beyond that, on a personal level, I think Kimber and Angela together are, are, are unstoppable. I feel that we're strategic together, we are fiery, we are relentless. Um, we have characteristics that are very similar in terms of um, accountability uh, to our communities and to each other. And I think it's critical to recognize the audacity that we both have to think that we can make a difference. Local First was the first organization to sign the Unity Pledge 
Well, it was a no-brainer, first of all. Um, it's small businesses coming together, uh, well, all businesses really coming together to uh, build an inclusive Arizona. That is what we do. So it's a no-brainer for me. And the Unity Pledge is all about building a stronger Arizona economy. So I didn't realize, didn't even think about our place in history as being the first organization to sign. It was really just that both Angela and I happened to be working on a Sunday morning at six o'clock and I got the email and I distinctly remember printing it out, signing it and scanning it back to her and she was like, wow, that was fast. And I always joke, you know, well, it's, you know, early bird gets the worm. I think what sets us apart at Local First Arizona is our willingness to step up for what's right, even if we're concerned that people may misunderstand. One of my favorites was when a gentleman, after 1062, he said, you don't speak for me. And I said, you're damn right I don't. Here's your refund. He was a member and he was outraged that we were simply defending inclusion. And I thought, okay, you don't, I don't represent your values and you don't represent mine. So let's part ways. However, I did try to have that conversation with him. I will always try to have that conversation. Local First Arizona and one community have partnered on the Your Vote Is Your Voice campaign, which is reaching far and wide to get the deep faces, the deep communities across Arizona to elevate those voices to make sure that they know they have a stake. I speak out on inclusivity issues because they matter for the future of Arizona. That Arizona is not successful economically or culturally if we're not truly inclusive. And I'm accountable to the people in my community. I'm accountable for building a better Arizona. And you don't get there by staying silent. Arizona's at a crossroads. Um, and it's funny because anybody that's known me for the last 25 years will say, you've said that before, I really mean it. Um, I do not want to wake up a little old lady and realize this place wasn't worth fighting for. And right now is the fight of our lifetimes, but we have to show up.